Hello everyone, so another MRCP Faces video. Today we are going to start a new series which I am calling Thinking as a Medical Registrar, okay? Um, and what we will do is that in this series, which is going to be intermittent, we are going to be talking about different topics like this video we're going to be talking about uh, anemia okay so another video it'll be a different topic so the focus of these videos will be for you to prepare for paces but actually give you the kind of advice that you need not just for paces but also in day-to-day -day practical life as a medical registrar because at the end of the day paces is testing how you are going to be as a medical registrar okay so for those of you who don't know me my name is dr vishal kumar i am the founder of keen medic the youtube channel and also keenmedic.com so let's get started so in this video we're going to be covering the unmissable questions that you have to ask in your exam okay the things that you need to consider when you are going to investigate the factors that will come into play and how you need to be prioritizing the management of a patient who's come with anemia and finally the follow-up so the first and foremost thing the unmissable questions so let's break it down into a few manageable chunks so every time there is a patient with anemia think about these few things okay first of all the drop the second thing is what's the most acute thing that you need to be looking out for and lastly the stuff that you need to be ruling out let's talk about the drop first so what do i mean by the drop so this is the drop in the hemoglobin okay how quickly they have become anemic that's that's what the drop means how acute the drop in hemoglobin is whether it has become um, whether it has been dropping over the last five years or has it dropped in the last week those two are completely different things okay those two the significance of those two different situations are completely different if a patient comes with the dropping hemoglobin for the last five years they may have an underlying chronic condition that needs to be investigated like for example for example chronic kidney disease okay but if they have had a sudden drop in hemoglobin in the last week let's say from 120 to 75 that is a huge drop okay and that is a very much a cause for concern and uh, an indication for admission to investigate and treat okay whether they are symptomatic because if they're symptomatic with the drop in the hemoglobin by symptomatic what i mean is symptoms like palpitations shortness of breath or even loss and loss of consciousness or chest pain okay so these are all symptoms of anemia if they're symptomatic then you need to consider whether they need blood transfusion okay and if they do most likely they will need admission second thing is the acute stuff so the acute stuff is the stuff that will kill the patient potentially okay and because we are talking about paces because we are talking about you being a medical registrar we're going to focus mainly in this situation on the main things that you are going to be dealing with okay in the exam situation and in real life so this will be stuff like upper gi and lower gi bleeding and also hemoptysis these will be among the most common things that you will see in terms of bleeding okay so these are the things that you need to always be considering uh, when you are dealing with patients with anemia in the acute setting okay uh, when you're ruling things out that could potentially kill a patient and there's everything else like intracerebral bleed now you will deal with this quite often as a medical registrar in fact but you will not deal with this really in the paces scenario which is why i've put it down here but of course it is very much a condition that can kill someone so you always have to be thinking about this if a patient has got anemia and they are confused or have lost consciousness okay so always be wary of this if that's the case and there's everything else that you would not really see in fact uh, even in paces 
diseases, which is stuff like hematuria and epistaxis and PV bleeding. Only situations where you would see uh, epistaxis and hematuria are in the situations of vasculitis, that kind of thing. Okay, and then there are the ones that you need to be ruling out. So, what does it? So, what do I mean by ruling out? So, the acute stuff is what you should be looking for every single time, okay? Those are the things that you will not be forgiven for if you miss. You always have to be thinking about them because they will kill the patient in the next few hours, okay? But there are also certain conditions which you have to think about and rule out. And the top most important thing here is malignancy. You need, to do, you need to be always looking out for red flag signs like night sweats, weight loss, loss of appetite, things like that. These are the constitutional signs okay, that you need to be asking patients if they've got anemia and if they are especially elderly or iron deficiency anemia. Of course, this is something that you will find on the blood test. Sometimes in patients, you will get blood tests. And you need to be able to recognize iron deficiency anemia. And if it is someone with, say, a change in bowel habit and they have come in with iron deficiency anemia, you have to immediately think about malignancy and ruling that out. That, that should become your top priority. But malignancy isn't the only one that you need to be ruling out. There are other things that you should also be thinking of, things that will also lead to anemia, okay? These are things like B12 and folate deficiency. It's a simple blood test which can easily be corrected, okay? So you always have to think about this. Anemia of chronic kidney disease, as I said earlier, if a patient has had declining hemoglobin for a number of months to years, it, is prob it may well be because of chronic kidney disease, in which case you need to look at their ferritin levels and probably even think about, you know, um, erythropoietin and referral to the renal doctors. Bone marrow failure. Now, just having low hemoglobin levels in bone marrow failure itself is quite uncommon. Uh, it can happen, but you will, what you should be looking out for is low counts of platelets and white cells as well. And always you need to be involving the hematology team. Bear in mind, you know, in PACES, while you are the candidate and they are examining you, bear in mind that it is supposed to be in the context of real life as well. So you should always be asking for help. And in this, in cases like uh, chronic kidney disease and bone marrow failure, you need to be referring the patient to specialists. So chronic kidney disease, it will be the renal team. Bone marrow failure, it would be the hematologist, okay? Don't take it upon yourself to manage and treat everything. Don't do that because it's unsafe and you're not expected to know and manage every single thing, okay? Now you need to think about when investigating might be appropriate or might not be appropriate. Now, why would you not want to investigate a patient with anemia? Hmm. Why, why do you think? Uh, just pause the video for a second and just have a quick think. Okay, so let's have a think. So anemia, why would anemia occur, especially in the longer term, okay? So there are many reasons as we've discussed. Well, the thing is, you would investigate everyone except for these people. People who are terminally ill, okay? By terminally ill, what do I mean? It means that generally they are... Uh, approaching towards the end of their life okay by generally I mean it means it could mean anything from days to weeks to a few months okay it's difficult to say I haven't put a definite date down because you need to put things into perspective for every single patient every single case okay because investigating may involve thing like things like endoscopies and the endoscopies are very much distressing procedures. So trying to find something that would cause distress in the process um, may not be in the best interest of the patient when they are not going to be living much longer anyway and it won't improve their quality of life anyway. So what's the point, right? So in uh, some examples are things like metastatic cancer where the patient is only for palliative care where they're not even fit enough for chemo or radiotherapy and, you know, they're just for symptomatic treatment. Or in patients with uh, advanced dementia, for example, where, you know, they are, um, they, they're not 
really conscious of what's going on around them. They can't feed or dress, dress themselves. They're reliant on others for all of their care. They don't recognize their family members even. So that kind of thing. Um, in those kind of situations, you would probably not investigate. This is not a decision you, you need to make yourself necessarily. You can always involve your seniors. You can always consult your consultants. That's what they are there for, to support you in this decision making. Especially if you are a bit more junior, you don't have to make these decisions. You can suggest it and you can always consult your consultant, okay? Because remember, the consultant is ultimately responsible for the patient's care. So don't make any decisions you are not comfortable with. And if you feel that, the, uh, that investigating may not be appropriate, what you should do in the exam setting is that you should talk to the family members about the wishes of the patient and the family and then say, you know, I will just have a discussion with my consultant and I'll come back to you. Uh, and just mention to them that investigating may not be right for the patient because it's not in the best interest. That's what you should do. Okay. The other reason why you may not investigate is when there is an obvious cause. So now bleeding can occur from literally anywhere in the body, right? So if you have found a cause and if it is obvious and if it explains the level of the drop of the hemoglobin within that set period of time, you don't have to be doing all the tests. It's all about putting things into context. Prioritizing the management is vital as a medical registrar. You have to do this on a day-to-day -day basis and you will be expected to do this in the patient's exam as well. You, may, you won't have an acutely unwell patient, but they may well give you a scenario where you may have to just play the game as it were, okay? You, you may have to just say what you would do should the patient become unwell, okay? which is why you have to know what to prioritize and how to prioritize it. So let's talk about this. So as a candidate, as a medreg, this is what you have to do. You have to worry about the top causes in the acute and the rule out diagnosis that we went through earlier on, okay? Make sure you know them very well and prioritize them correctly. And then you think about the rest. So always consider these things, stabilizing the patient first, Follow the A to E approach, A, B, C, D, E management, okay? So airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure. Always follow this management. Say that this is, this is what you would do and that if need be, you would resuscitate them adequately with fluids, blood, etc. okay? So that kind of thing, that's the language you should be using. The very first thing you need to be doing. And then what you need to do is think about things like endoscopy, upper or lower GI endoscopy, whatever it is, okay? You won't be doing this yourself, not in the acute setting. You will need to call for help. You will need to call the endoscopist to do the endoscopy, but they are, they are not going to do the endoscopy at all if you don't stabilize the patient first, okay? So you need to stabilize the patient and then they will do the endoscopy, always. So remember that. And then you need to also perhaps think about things like CT, because CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis uh, can basically show up any underlying malignancy, especially in frailer patients who may not be fit enough for endoscopies. Other things that you should be thinking about are transfusion. So this may well come as a part of stabilizing the patient. Transfusion can also be done in the setting of just symptom control, okay? So if the patient is symptomatic, you might just transfuse them so that their symptoms are better, not necessarily because um, you think that they are bleeding right now, okay? The other thing you should be thinking about is hematinics. Basic hematinics are the B12, folate, iron studies, and thyroid function. And of course, these days you get patients on anticoagulants for various reasons, okay? Every second, third patient that you see on the acute medical take in the UK, you will find patients on anticoagulants, whether that's warfarin or novel agents like apixaban, for example. So you need to think about always discontinuing these anticoagulants. Or if it's warfarin and if they are bleeding um, and their INR is high, then to reverse it, 
and also seeking hematology advice and when you are doing all of this because some in some cases um, they are on it for a very a very legitimate reason like a recent pulmonary embolism so you should always seek the advice of the hematologist as well in terms of the follow-up really it just depends entirely on the cause so so if it's a GI bleed um, it would need follow-up with the gastroenterologist okay because they may well need a repeat endoscopy which is OGD or if it's a malignancy for instance then they will need to be discussed at the relevant MDT meeting the multidisciplinary team meeting where radiologists oncologists and relevant specialties gather and make a decision uh, for the treatment of the malignancy of the cancer okay and the follow-up would be with the relevant specialty for example respiratory if it's a cancer of the uh, lungs with or without oncology usually with or palliative if it is a palliative cancer if it is advanced if it is metastatic then palliative team may also be involved so I hope that makes sense guys let's just do a quick summary then so we've talked about some key things you can't miss as a medical registrar and a PACES candidate and to always prioritize the management and the investigations and to always stabilize the patient first before you do any kind of investigations okay ABCDE is key it should be your mantra you need to stabilize the patient first otherwise they will die okay you can't afford that to, to be happening on your on your watch you, you need to know when not to investigate but if you are not sure always seek the advice of your seniors of your consultant and arrange appropriate follow-up so if you want to learn more make sure you check out my book which will be linked down below there is the paperback version and also kindle and of course my course which is uh, filled with lots of different features including multi monthly webinars that i do with my students so i will see you in the next video guys